This is one of many Bluetooth keyboards, but what's different about it is this. It's that simple. And that flap there is magnetic, which is just makes for easy closure. Some sellers sell this with the stand, and some sellers sell the stand separately. Try saying that in a hurry. So this is what it looks like. This is the white version. You can get it in black as well. And that's to give you an idea of the size. It's roughly the length of two £5 notes, slightly under. So what I'll do is I'll show you it in use. It is a UK layout, but it looks as if it isn't, because Shift 3, it says, is a hash there, but fortunately when I press it, it does give a pound sign, which is the correct UK layout. All the other symbols are exactly as it says on the tin, i.e. exactly as it says on the keyboard. The only problem with this is it means that the uh, hash isn't there. If it is there, I haven't been able to find it, so I enter it manually using the keyboard on the iPhone or iPad. The keyboard bounced just then, and that's one of the flaws in the design, and I'll talk about that in just a moment. I find that every single Bluetooth keyboard I've ever used differs from a standard keyboard, i.e. one on a desktop or laptop, and that is that when you press Control arrow on a desktop or laptop, it moves the cursor one word at a time, but you can see here that on these Bluetooth keyboards it moves it to the end of the line, which is a bit of a nuisance, but you get around it simply by pressing Alt Arrow. So it is different, but you get used to it. Other differences, you get the small enter key rather than the large L-shaped one, and the cursor keys there are close to the rest of the keyboard, so you can hit them by mistake. That's the bouncy keyboard problem, I'll show you where that comes from, and the hinges are here, and underneath the hinges are the feet, and that means that to either side of the feet, the far left and the far right, there's nothing to uh, keep them in contact with the desk, so if you press a little bit too hard, then it does bounce, and I find that a problem when pressing, for example, Control and Shift. You can set the keyboard to iOS, Android or Windows, and this is from the manual, which shows you what the function keys do for those three things. Those two dark teardrops are LEDs to show when you've got a Bluetooth connection and when it's charging, etc. That's the input port for charging it, and that's the charging lead which is supplied with the keyboard. I shot this to show you one of those LEDs in action, it's the caps lock indicator, so it's good to know that you have got something to indicate when caps lock is on. So how does the cover convert into a stand? It's as simple as that. It's held in position by magnets, doesn't want to sit there, wants to sit there, doesn't want to sit there, so it naturally falls into position there. I've paused the video here just a moment to show you this. This groove here is designed for tablets, either in portrait or landscape format, and it's so broad that I find it'll hold my iPad in its case, which is great. There's dark areas here as well, which are fo is foam padding to stop your tablet or phone from scratching, and that that pulls out there, that's for a phone. How quickly can you put it all away? That's only about seven seconds once I've removed my phone. Please subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and I hope you found this helpful.